Welcome Chemcom. So far in unit eight, we've talked about water. How pure is it? And how to make sure we have enough of it. Now we're gonna shift our focus to air quality and the pollutants that we need to keep our eye on. Let's get started. Most air pollutants in our society come from fossil fuel based energy production. This can be from a vehicle, but this can also be from industry. Some consequences of air pollution might be smelly or ugly air, air that's not very clear, but it can also corrode buildings and affect livestock and crops. Sources of air pollution can be natural, but they can also be human made. Natural air pollution could be volcanoes and fires, and then human made air pollution could be from industry or vehicles. A primary pollutant is one that directly enters the atmosphere. That means after it is produced, it directly enters the atmosphere without changing in any way. Methane is an example of this. Methane can come from anaerobic bacteria, cattle, but can also be produced by burning fossil fuels. Another type of primary air pollutant is a VOC or a volatile organic compound. These hydrocarbons, they evaporate easily and their gas is at room temperature, so it's really easy for them to get into the atmosphere. They often come from like unburned gasoline. So when you go to the gasoline pump and you pump gasoline, any of that gasoline vapor that goes into the air is a VOC. It's volatile because it evaporates so readily. These VOCs are causes of smog. On these charts, you can see that primary pollutants, the most common primary pollutant is carbon monoxide, but we also have sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides. Where they come from though, you can see that transportation is the primary source, but industrial and other fuel source combustion is also a large part of where primary pollutants come from. A secondary air pollutant is something that goes into the atmosphere and then changes or bonds with something else that's already there. It might bond with other primary pollutants or it could bond with natural air components. Things like acid rain or this would be nitric oxide or sulfuric acid or hydrogen peroxide, those are all examples of secondary pollutants. Let's talk about some other types of air pollution. Particulate pollution would be any microscopic particle that enters the air from human activities. This could be from a smokestack or a natural process like fire or a volcano. And then we have synthetic substances, things that are human made that can be dangerous. Chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs are an example of this. They're a fluorine based compound that used to be used as a refrigerant. These CFCs have the, have the potential to destroy ozone, which can be pretty dangerous to earth. As we stated earlier, automobiles contribute to almost half of the total mass of human generated air contaminants. That's a lot. So switching cars to electric is a big push, not just because it saves energy, but also because it reduces air pollution. Another type of pollution, smog, is really just a combination of the words smoke and fog. It's caused by weather conditions interacting with air conditions, and it can endanger your health. Inhaling smog is bad for your lungs. The EPA developed an air quality index that you can see on your phone on your weather app to tell how hazardous the smog or the air is in your area. If you're someone that has asthma or other breathing conditions, the air quality index is a very important thing to, to look at on a regular basis. Photochemical smog is when we have a hydrocarbon that interacts with the sunlight. And typically what it creates is this brown photochemical smog that's really dense and hard to see through. A lot of times you can see pictures of major cities that kind of are surrounded in a shroud of photochemical smog, specifically cities that don't have very good air quality regulation. Smog is constantly moving to different areas. Because vehicles produce most air contaminants, when they operate, changes the air quality in a given area. So for instance, morning rush hour is from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. And because of that, photochemical smog is typically at its highest during that time period. In the evening, there's not as much worry because people go home at different times and therefore spread out the production of that photochemical smog. So what are some things we can do to reduce pollution in the air? We can use technologies that don't use combustion, like an electric vehicle. We can become more efficient with how we burn fossil fuels and therefore producing less. We can also remove potentially harmful substances from the fuel so that when we burn it, it doesn't enter the atmosphere. We can make sure that fuel burns more completely so that we're not releasing VOCs into the atmosphere. 
and we can also remove those pollutants after we burn it. A lot of times industries do this on top of a smokestack where they're burning some kind of fossil fuel. Let's talk about some of those ways that industries remove pollution. One type is electrostatic precipitation. This is a technique that basically controls the particulate pollutants that industries produce. They pass the waste through an electric field. The waste particles then become charged and attract to a metal plate. Mechanical filtering is kind of what it sounds like. It's using a filter. It's like what you'd see in a vacuum cleaner that kind of is purifying the air as the air passes through. Scrubbing is a process that controls the particles and sulfur oxides that are released into the atmosphere. It takes the fumes off the burning fossil fuel and passes it through something that collects the SO2 and other particulates. Typically, you see scrubbers on the top of a smokestack if you go to a major city that has major industries. Once again, we keep coming back to automobiles. Much of our air pollution comes from our combustion engines in our vehicles. And much of our legislation over the last 50 to 60 years has been an attempt to try to control that pollution that we're adding to the atmosphere. In 1970, the EPA authorized something called the Clean Air Act. And this set emission standards for vehicles. It basically said, you're only allowed to emit this much pollution from any vehicle. This led to the development of a catalytic converter that we put on the exhaust of vehicles and kind of cleans the air before it leaves. We've already talked about CFCs. Um, this is what a CFC looks like, or a chlorofluorocarbon. These are typically in cooling fluids and propellants. And the reason they're dangerous is because they deplete the ozone, which allows more sunlight into the earth, and it heats up the earth through global warming. In the 1970s, two chemists proposed that CFCs were destroying the ozone layer and creating a large hole over Antarctica. This slide describes how the CFC becomes dangerous to the ozone layer. I'm not concerned that you know the reaction, just understand that a CFC has the potential to deplete the ozone. In 1987, the US and other countries signed something called the Montreal Protocol. It called for the ending of all CFC production and replacing CFCs in industry with another type of coolant. What were developed were HCFCs and HFCs, hydrochlorofluorocarbons and hydrofluorocarbons. HCFCs took one of the chlorine atoms out of the molecule and therefore less free radical chlorines were being produced and therefore it was not depleting the ozone as much. The disadvantage here is that you're still producing chlorine-free radicals. It's still producing a greenhouse gas. An HFC does not have any chlorine in it. And so the benefit of this is it was not producing any chlorine-free radicals that were attacking the ozone. One type of HFC that is currently used most often is called Puron. It doesn't have any chlorine, and it's viewed as much more safe in our current society than we had from Freon decades ago. I hope that helped make you aware of some of the different air pollutants and some of the things that currently threaten our air quality. Once again, just like with water, take some time to think about what you do on a daily basis and how that is impacting the air quality around you. Good job today, we'll see you soon.